Hey guys, I'm Daniel and today I want to talk about smart contracts in a bit of an unconventional way. While processing smart contract related educational content, I have come to a conclusion that the only way to actually understand what a smart contract is, is to dig really deep into the technical base, code and all the complex things. This is rather a lengthy process and I think there should be another way. The very least we need to know is smart contract is a program deployed to a blockchain network. Blockchain is decentralized, immutable and transparent. So is a smart contract. Blockchain on its own allows us to work with money or cryptocurrencies. Smart contracts drastically expand this functionality, allowing us to work with assets. Imagine you have an airplane ticket and you are looking to sell it. With the state of current technology, the first thing you'll be looking into is finding some middleman to provide security. If we base the same use case on a smart contract, we have no need for any middleman whatsoever because we have a smart contract and smart contract is simply all the rules and conditions of the agreement which are visible to both sides of the agreement prior to, the take, to taking the deal. You might say that I have never heard of any solutions like these. And the reason for that is they are not yet too common because smart contracts and blockchain asset technology are still relatively new. And the main focus is on projects that are tackling one of the major issues, the major blockers, which is tokenization. It is hard to sell tickets, rent cars and buy properties if we have none of them present on chain. So we will use th these two examples, smart, uh, NFTs and cryptocurrencies or tokens to tackle some of the common confusions. So first and most common confusion comes from the, from the term itself. The smart part in the smart contract makes it hard for people to believe that smart contracts can't actually call anything on their own any transaction or call within a smart contract need to be initialized or originate from an externally owned account. The contract part, while makes sense in some of the use cases like exchanges, insurances and so on, doesn't help as much in case of tokens. And here where the second confusion steps in. People believe that one NFT each NFT is a separate smart contract, which is not the case. A uh, smart contract in case of tokens is simply a record book of ownership. You owning an NFT comes down to your address in the line with mapping next to the ID of your NFT. Smart contracts are designed to be minimalistic, simple and reliable. Uh, mostly it's all about not complex code structures, but the most efficient, efficient way to leverage the technology to solve some actual issue. And let's now look at how you interact with them. We'll use an example of tokens. So if Alice has thousands of, say, token A, and she wants to transfer 100 to you, what she does is she calls the smart contract of token A with the call of function transfer with an argument of your address and amount of tokens, 100. Smart contract then checks whether the amount next to Alice's address in the line of mapping is more or equal to 100. If it is, it then deduces this amount next to her address and increments it next to yours. And that is it. You now own these tokens. So if you want to use them, purchase something in some other store, you simply go to the contract of the store, call the function buy, and the store will do everything for you. It will call the token contract and do the same process. So check whether you have the tokens and initiate this transfer from, from your address to the address of the store. And that is all I wanted to share with you today. I hope this helps you tackle some of the confusions. If you're looking to learn more, feel free to explore rest of the educational content on, on Camino and 
Stay tuned for the next part.